Hello, everyone. Everybody here? Can everybody hear me? Yes, you can. can. Oh, good morning. Yep. Well, good morning by me, by you guys, probably maybe good afternoon or good evening. How's everybody doing? I'm good. Great. Excellent. Excellent. Where is everybody is from while well, we're waiting for people to still join us? I am from, I'm currently in Florida, USA, and it's uh, a bit cold for me, but it's still not snow. <laughs> how is it by you guys? Where are you guys from? You know, how do you know Neurographica? Everybody's welcome to share. I am from Germany, from Lower Saxony, near Hamburg. Beautiful, beautiful. Welcome. So we are nearly neighbors, Sabine. Yeah. I'm in Lüneburg in Germany. <laughs> Beautiful. Who else? One second, let me open up the chat. Oh, Elena, you're from Italy, beautiful. Angelica, hello, you're from Austria. Wonderful, wonderful. So beautiful, everybody. How's it going? How do you guys know Neurographica? Some of you I know personally, some of you I don't know personally, but I see you guys. Uh, either a part of our world of Neurographica or maybe a part of the one of the courses you took with us. So it's so beautiful to see you guys in person. And um, how is Micheline is from Ber Belgium, beautiful. Christina from Germany, also Germany, beautiful. We guys have, a, I know in Germany, Neurographica is so popular, it's, it's beautiful. You guys know that one of the first places that Pavel Piscario, uh, the founder of Neurographic, you know, he founded his institute in Germany before even he created Neurographica. Germany was the place where he founded his, his Institute of uh, Psychology of Creativity. So that's something great to know. Welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome. Neurographic. So I was asking, how does anybody here who doesn't know Neurographica at all, he's completely new, who doesn't know what it's about, who would like to learn. Hi, Masha, how are you? It's so nice to see you. Hi, hi Lana. how are you? Good, good, good. I missed you. How are you? How, how, how has it been so far in the winter, in January 2021? How's everybody's year starting? See somebody else's message. Ah, you got a tip from Neurogra from Angelica Sabina. Oh, beautiful. You're a specialist. Excellent. 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 Great to know that. Great to know that. Beautiful. You know what? I'm gonna put this here because I can't see everybody. And I think that's about it. I think we're gonna start. It's 10:05. So welcome everybody to the Neurographica class, but today's gonna to be an unusual Neurographica class. I'm gonna start a bit different. I'm gonna start talking about something called the metaphoric associative cards. Uh, let me know who here knows what metaphoric associative cards are, who heard about it, who knows what I'm talking about or for whom it's a completely, Yes, Elena, hi, I remember you. I know you started the basics course with me. Welcome, welcome, absolutely, very excited. Angelica also, your neurographic specialist, beautiful. I'm so excited, guys. We have different backgrounds here and it's wonderful. So um, metaphoric associative cards, who knows what I'm talking about? You guys can talk, by the way, you can unmute yourself and talk. I knew the cards, Sabine is saying, beautiful, yes, yes. Um, the metaphoric associative cards have started with a, a psychotherapist uh, who have heard about the soul collage. Oh, that's interesting, Sheila. I, what is a soul collage? Is it um, American made cards or is it uh, European made? Because there is a huge difference between the way metaphoric cards are manufactured in Europe, specifically um, you know, former Soviet Union uh, countries like Russia and Ukraine, they are the biggest uh, manufacturers of them now. You make your own. Oh, wow, beautiful. I'll look into it. That's very interesting. So there was a psychotherapist 
who at one point, uh, uh, not a psychotherapist, I'm sorry, there was uh, somebody who was a, uh, an artist and the friend, the psychotherapist friend came over and looked at the, the friend's, uh, um, at the artist's pictures and said, oh, this is so interesting, you know? I see something and he started describing the picture. Oh, wow, beautiful. You guys, so interesting. We're making our own community here. Uh, let me let somebody else in. And, and the artist looked at the picture and said, that's so interesting. That's not what I meant by this picture. And he started describing his own understanding of how the picture looks and how everything is. And the psychotherapist got an idea and he was the inventor of the very first metaphoric cards called OHO. They're actually the most famous ones. They're called the O cards. Everybody know about them. They're the very first cards everybody start with when they learn about uh, uh, metaphoric cards. So O cards are just a, a bunch of abstract uh, pictures that our therapists actually uh, more than any other psychologist. So again, in Europe, psychologists are the one who start using the metaphoric cards within their practice, not just our therapists. And people started looking at different cards and uh, pe people started using different ca cards to start understanding what is going on here, okay? I'm gonna explain to you first before we're gonna start drawing, but I'm gonna do it in a fun way, okay? I'm gonna choose a picture. And uh, by the way, hello to everybody who just joined me. I know there were some people who just joined me. So welcome everybody. Welcome to the neurographic session, but an unusual one where we're gonna start integrating some different type of practice called the metaphoric associative cards, okay? I wanna share an interesting picture with you. With a picture here that I definitely wanted to share. I said, ooh, this is the one I want to share with everybody, okay? I'm gonna share a screen now. Let me know everybody, can everybody see my screen? You can either nod your head or you can say yes, or you can even use a smileys um, as a part of your reaction. Excellent, so I can see people are saying yes. Okay, so um, excellent, I can see that, beautiful. Uh, the very first thing is before we even start, you can just look at the picture for now. I wanna let you know that there are certain rules when it comes to the pictures before I, because I actually wanna, yeah, I actually wanna, um, have you guys maybe some, do have some, some participation, but before we do so, the very first rule that I want everybody to be aware of is that when we talk about the metaphoric associative card, everybody have their own opinion. And the rule is we don't tell another person what they should be thinking. That's number one rule. When it comes to metaphoric associative cards, the whole point about the cards is that everybody have their own association with the image that they see. And the association within the image brings in their own metaphor within a, each person's mind, their own memory, their own you know, in invoking, so to say, in, you know, invoking a certain memory or a certain, you know, even subconscious thought that maybe they weren't aware of. Okay, that's the magic of the metaphoric card is that a lot of times people would start, would look at the picture and would not even realize what the thought is regarding a certain idea or a certain goal or a certain even like, you know, um, memory, you know, metaphoric associative cards have been used now. Nowadays, they're widely used in all kinds of psychological or art therapy field, you know, background. They're used in traumas, you know, 
where people, uh, they have certain actual special trauma cards created for that. They used in, um, you know, regular, like, you know, they used with children to bring up what, how, how every day, you know, uh, days going for, for some, some students, you know, and they're also used with adults for like coaching purposes, you know, what is your goal? How would you like to get there? How do you, what do you think you we should do about this and that? Um, so it's very important when we talk about the metaphoric associative cards for everybody to have a right to their opinion. It's not just important, it's kind of a rule because what I see may not be the same thing that you see. Your opinion of the image not just opinion, but your reflection, association, that's why I call the associative card, may be different than mine. And that's the beauty. That's what I'm here for. That's why we work with them to help you kind of rediscover, bring up what you feel would be most appropriate, most, um, not just appropriate, but most um, you know, relevant to you. Okay, so who would like to take a turn? I would say like few people. I just want you guys to understand how, it, how the picture, the reaction to the same picture can be different with different people or it could be something similar, you know? And it has to do with, of course, cultural background. And it also has to do with a person's personal, you know, own personal point of view, you know, background history, life history, and life circumstances. Who would like to tell me what they see in this picture? Just simple description. Just let me know what you see in the picture now that you had a few minutes to look at it. Anybody? So I can do myself, but I wanted somebody else to kind of uh, participate just so we can show. So I personally, right, because I don't want to say what I see because, because I'm the, the one who is leading the session, people might want to think that that's how they should think. My point is that everybody will notice, there are so many details on this picture that everybody will notice their own details. Everybody will focus on one or two elements more than I, than I would, let's say. When I looked at the picture, the first thing I noticed was the girl holding the heart and the boy. And then I was talking to you ladies. And then I looked again. And only then, I think the third or the fourth time I looked at the picture, I noticed a pail of hearts on the bottom. That was not something I even saw the first time. And then I also saw the watering can to the right side on the bottom. Can people see my mouse when I, when I point to the picture? Can you see a mouse when I point to the picture? Yeah, excellent. So this watering can, I did not notice. My very first focus when I looked at the picture was the girl holding the heart and the boy looking at her. Now, after I've been looking at this picture for about a few minutes, right? I've been talking to you and I'm looking at the picture. The thought that crossed my mind was, does this boy, is this boy looking at the her, the lady, at the girl, or is he looking at the heart in her hand? Do you guys notice? So it's interesting to pay attention that the first thing we're going to notice are the elements in the picture. Then we're going to have to have to, we're going to start having the association, associative thoughts, and also associative images within our head. Yes. So, oh, I see now you guys writing love connection, love romance, romantic scene. I see many hearts in the bucket. There you go. You see, I didn't notice that. You guys see that? Pay attention and you can even take a paper and write it down for yourself. What was the very first thing you noticed in the picture? And what was the second? What were the first two elements that you noticed in the picture? Some people would notice the curtains on the left. Some people would even notice the pictures on the very right of the picture, you know, the, the flowers on the right of the picture, um, the yellow flowers, right? 
Some people would pay attention to the interesting lantern above the head of the, uh, you know, the male figure in the picture, right, of the boy. And for me, by the way, I did not do it consciously, but I paid attention to the symbol. I believe it's a symbol, it's a, a signature of the artist. So Elena, you, you notice the heart and the floor. Yeah. Yeah, you see? That's what I said. Everybody have their own way, their own kind of the, the, the um, main things they notice first. And then after a few minutes, they start noticing the things around. The things that you notice first is something that would catch your attention, something that would bring the most kind of meaning, the most association within you. Okay, so m and &M, you said window. Excellent, yeah, it's actually a beautiful window. Look how 3D it looks, right? With a little shade out and in, right? With a white shade. So I wanna tell you the, the artist, um, her name is Marie. She's very famous. She's famous for very famous cards called the Dixit cards. Um, did anybody here know what the Dixit cards? Can everybody hear me? My internet is telling me there's some issues with my, my audio. People hear me? Excellent. Masha, you notice the blue sky and the cloud on the left. Thank you, Masha. I did not even notice that until you told me so. Now that you told me, I'm looking, you're right. There is a cloud and the blue. I did not pay attention. Again, when you look at the picture, the first element, most of the time, by the way, those are the elements that are the biggest. The biggest, the element that are the biggest size, the biggest shape in the picture are the ones that will take your attention. Mm -hmm. Moon imaging like logo in the bottom. Absolutely. That's the logo of the artist. I wanna show it to you. There are famous, they're actually sold as a game. If you guys are interested in exploring the metaphoric associative cards further, I would absolutely advise you to get it. They sell them on Amazon. I mean, everywhere, all the countries have them, not just US, they have them. Actually, the first time I heard about it was from a lady in Russia. And I was like, Dixon. And I went and I looked for it. It's a game for kids. And I wanna tell you, this is one of the best games to play with kids. When I got it, and we still, we play it all the time. It's a way to get kids to be very inventive, imaginative, and most importantly, to be very attentive to what they see and to be very, you know, critical thinking. Critical way of thinking is very important for children. So when you get these cards, that's what helps the children or adults. I'm telling you, I bought the, the game and then I started, you know, using it as a metaphoric card. And a bunch of my friends bought it and some of them don't have kids. So that this is an adult game. This is one of those games um, that, um, one of those games that can be used for both kids and adults. I'm gonna change my camera for now. I'm gonna stop the sharing for, for a little bit. We're gonna go on later on. I'm gonna change my camera. I want you to look at this card. So the ones I would recommend uh, I'm gonna pin myself so everybody can see. Okay, uh, one second, let me remove the background. Mm -hmm. Make it low light. Okay, can everybody see my camera? What I'm showing you now, okay? The name of the game is this, Dixit. This is what I would suggest to get in the very beginning. This is the best game. They're whimsical, they're interesting, they're unusual. And they also have a way of, you know, it's one of those pictures that, um, oh, Michelle Lynn, that's interesting. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. I actually noticed that right away that the girl was, you know, the skin color was different for both of them. But yes, thank you for bringing that up. White boy and 
white boy and black girl. Yeah, beautiful. You know what? I noticed it, but I didn't make um, a conscious association with that. Something to pay attention, right? Certain things you would notice, but they would make an imprint in your mind, but you wouldn't like give it an association. So the name of the game is Dixit, D-I-X-I-T, okay? G-I, Dixit, okay? It's a game. I suggest getting, they have a game, the base game, and then they have additional cards that they sell. First buy the base game because it's really a great way to just get to know the card. Look at these two cards, okay? You can look at one at one, okay? The cards are very interesting. Everybody can see the card clearly? Yeah, excellent. So do you notice how the thing, the card, the pictures can be interpreted in so many different ways, right? There are many different, the picture is very multifaceted, multidimensional, right? Ooh. Oh, okay, the recording is on, right? It has symbols on each drawer. It has colors on top, right? It has a person who's walking and people, different people may have different association with the way the person looks. And the interesting part is what I am going to uh, bring in now. Oh, one second. I want to show, write it to everybody actually. The name of the game is Dixit, okay? Um, this picture will be relevant to different people in different way, also based on what are you looking for? What is the answer you are seeking when you're looking at the picture? So the second aspect of metaphoric associative cards, if the first aspect was imaging, right? The image itself is very important. The second part is the questions. You can look at the picture and it would just look a beautiful picture to you without invoking any special, you know, images or association. But if I start, uh, excuse me, what's going on here? Okay. Uh, but if I start asking you a question, and I know some of you here are coaches. I know some of you people, so I know who you are and you are coaches and you know what I'm talking about. You know, the main thing about coaching is asking the right question. When you ask the question from the card, the card will give you an answer. And when we say the card, is it really the card that will give you an answer? This is very important to notice that, right? It's not the card. This is not, um, I remember when I first started doing it, I, I personally, with any card association, metaphoric, any card that would, you discuss the picture and then that would give you meaning. To me personally, it was completely and fully associated with, you know, fortune telling. Tarot cards, you know, all of that stuff that's like very, fishy, not very scientific, you know, especially let's say if you're a religious person, right? And you believe in God, a lot of religions are against that. You're not supposed to go to a fortune teller. There's something going on. And remember the very first thing I remember like thinking, you know, this is like fortune telling. And then when I learned about it, it was amazing. The difference between let's say fortune telling and this, the reason why I tell you guys, it's very important when somebody is saying what, in, what the card means, it's important not to interrupt and say, you don't understand. That's not what it means. What it really means is this and this and that. Is because when you tell somebody the meaning of the images that they see, you are kind of foretelling, you know, you're doing the fortune telling. You're kind of telling that person what to think. Now, let's do the opposite way. If I show you the picture and I ask you, what do you see? What is this image, right? Notice I'm not even naming this symbol, this image. I'm not saying this is a person. I'm not saying this is a male or a female. I'm leaving everything at the discretionary of the person who is viewing this. I'm allowing that person to interpret the symbolical image in the picture. Why? 
because the person, like I mentioned in the very beginning, because that person has a right, has a right to their own association, to their own understanding of what they do. And furthermore, if I am, let's say, a coach, or let's say you yourself, you're working with yourself and you're getting a card, if you are looking for an answer to a question, and most of the time, let's say my question would be, what can I do? Let's say I'm starting a project. What should be my first step? Or how should I go about starting it? Only you, your own conscious and subconscious self will know the answer, right? And we can go much deeper here and say your soul always knows the answer, right? And um, your subconscious always has the answer, but it is hidden. So the picture will allow you to come up, you know, to kind of touch upon that aspect of your subconscious where the answer lies. But it will not be like easily accessible. You know, we're going to start practicing now and you guys will see. But it's also important to know that um, I wanted to say something and the thought left my mind. You guys know what that happens? It was something I wanted to say and now it disappeared. So I'm going to remember it later on. Um, when we, it's very important. That's why this is not a fortune teller. This is not somebody telling you what to think. I will not be telling you what to think here. My job will be to show you the main questions you can always ask yourself when you look at any picture and that picture will kind of give you a clue and understanding of what you are looking for, of the answer you might want to go to, okay? So we're actually going to start. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to use, um, I'll think about it. Maybe I'll use this card and maybe I still want to, I enjoy. So Dixit cards, there are different types of cards. We have the metaphoric cards. Dixit, as you can see, are a bit of a like controversial, right? It has different aspects. It can have pictures that are a bit controversial to each other. The picture that I shared with you is a bit different. It's lighter. It's not as, you know, as complicated, so to say. Although as we, we saw before, if you pay attention, the more you look at it, the more details you see. And like I mentioned, the artist, Marie, it sounds like Marie Curie, but it's something like, she's a French artist. Um, if When you look up Dixit, it will say her name. And she's the same artist who drew the Dixit pictures. That was the reason why I showed you the Dixit pictures. She's truly amazing. I personally love her, her pictures. And um, I find her to be completely amusing and amazing, okay? So I'm gonna show you now how to use the metaphoric card when we use, when we draw neurographica, okay? Prepare your paper, take a paper if you're drawing with me, take a marker, okay? We're gonna draw, we're gonna, um, I'm gonna stop the sharing, I'm gonna transfer the paper and we're gonna start the drawing and usually those of you who draw with me or not just even with me, but those of you who draw with other people, you know, probably, I know for sure with me, I do that. That's why I say with me, that the first thing we need before we draw is a topic, a goal. What are you trying to achieve? What are you looking for? You know, it can be as simple as having a beautiful day or, you know, uh, doing something fun. It's a Sunday day, right? It can be something a bit more complicated, say, you know, I'm starting a new project and I want to be successful, right? Anything you choose, you can choose it now. Find the goal. Um, we are not going to do the two-minute brainstorm just for the purpose of time being, simply because I want to show you the technique instead of just going and doing the actual, you know, session with you. But I do invite you to just write down their goal, okay? What is your goal? Um, my goal for this is, um, let's say, you know, I have to, some people are starting a project. I have to complete a very important project, okay? And that's my goal, okay? 
We're not gonna go into it, nothing complicated, but we are going to start putting it on the paper, okay? And I invite you to put it in an interesting way. I invite you to draw a timeline on your paper. It's the beginning of the year. Uh, it's still January, so a lot of people use it as a way to plan their year. And it's the best way. And my project actually will, is not like a, a small project. It's a huge product that will actually affect the rest of my year, the rest of my uh, you know, professional field within Neurographica. So I'm going to put out um, a timeline. How do we draw a timeline? The timeline can be straight, right? In regular uh, uh, images, the timeline would be straight, right? You start over here, you go over here, this is the present, and this is the future, okay? I'm going to do a neurographic timeline, which means I'm going to start on this edge of the paper and go to the right, okay? Because we usually go from left to right when it comes to time. And I'm going to draw a neurographic line, okay? Anybody here who is not familiar with Neurographica, mainly two main things, the Neurographic line and the rounding process, the rounding method. Please let me know so I can explain it to you uh, in details. You can either write it or you can say it. Say it now or forever hold your peace. Everybody here is familiar with Neurographica, excellent, okay? Great, great to know. Okay, so we're drawing a neuro timeline, right? Um, and now look at your timeline. You can even put your hands over here, you know, um, and think, where are you on your timeline? Now, I'll give you a bit of a hint. Allow yourself to be on the left side of the paper, because the right side is where your goal would be. But where exactly is really your intuition, your intuitive choice? Like I said, put your fingers, put your hand on the paper and you can actually feel, you can take your finger and go on your timeline to see where are you now? And you can mark it here. This is the present. This is where we are now. And over here, you put an arrow, meaning it goes further. And this is the future. And I'm seeing myself Right, intuitively, I feel myself, I'm gonna put a dot here and then I'm gonna put a circle. I am right here. This is where I am now, okay? As I do that, now this is my present and this P became my past, right? Logical, right? Everything before my present is my past and everything forward in my present would be my future. Now I'm going with my finger and I'm wondering where is my goal? The goal I'm looking for. In your case, it's your goal. What are you looking for? Where would it be? I'm going on the line and I feel my goal. You know, I am I'm looking at this part and this part and I'm wondering what's going on here. Because I my eyesight is telling me my goal should be here, but my finger is telling me it's here. So I'm wondering what's going on. It could also be the project has different, you know, aspect, different steps. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to make a circle over here. The side of the circle, whether it's for your goal or for yourself, does not matter. It's really your choice, how big or small you want to make it, okay? I want you guys to be aware of that. Now, the first thing you do right away is round out the intersection where your circle intersects with your neural line, okay? And now, okay? Okay, I did this. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is, you're looking at your goal, and I would like for you guys, okay, let's start utilizing the metaphoric card, okay? I'm going to draw a card, 
I don't see. The way you can draw a metaphoric card can be two ways, okay? I'm gonna show you both ways. For now, I'm drawing the card without seeing blindly, right? Any card that comes to you, okay? How do you choose a card, right? Me, myself, being a very logical person, you know, and trying to, you know, make sure, like I said, you know, I don't want it to look like we are fortune telling here or anything. But the reason, as soon as we start drawing the picture, as soon as we get connected to your goal, your mind now is looking for any answer to the picture, to the goal that you're putting for yourself. I want to complete my project and I want to find it the best possible way, okay? I'm going to draw a picture that will represent my project. Now, this is the interesting part. I am working with all of you. We are here together. It's like a field. We're in the same field. So the picture I will draw will not just be a symbol of my project, but it will also be a symbol of your project. Because like I said, I'm not alone here. I am kind of in tune with all of you. So the picture will be relevant to all of us, but each one of us will have their own association, their own kind of reflection of what they see. You guys ready? I'm gonna turn it over and put it next to my goal, okay? I'm putting it next to my goal like this. I'm looking at it. You can do breathing in and out because honestly, I just looked at it and I felt a sensation in my chest. So I can do that. What I do is um, I do the awareness process, right? I'm gonna kind of quickly, I'm not gonna pay much attention to this within this session, but I'm just gonna write here my reflection, my reaction to the picture. Like I said, I had a chest sensation. I'm gonna write it down just for myself. Now, pay attention to your thoughts. And I would suggest to write it down just for you guys to learn, to start learning and understanding how this works. If you want to, it's not a requirement, of course, on my behalf. I'm looking at the picture. And the first question, this is what I would like for you guys to take away from the session. The first question you ask yourself or whoever you know you are working with or um, maybe you're just, you know, using this as a friend. You know, I do this a lot with friends. The question you ask is, what do you see? Please describe the picture. Okay. Okay. I'm going to offer one more time. If anybody wants to step forward and kind of, you know, do the example, it's up to you. If you're welcome to do that, simply because I feel like, you know, it would go much better if it wouldn't be just my reflection. But I understand if people, um, not everybody feel talkative. Anybody here interested in um, kind of doing the role playing with me? Okay, so I'm gonna yeah, I'll go. Hi, Lana, I'll go. Yes. Yes, hello, Dr. Manorama. Hello, hello. One second, let me pin you next to me. Okay, excellent. So, Dr. Manorama, can you tell me what do you see in the picture? Can you please describe it? I see a golden cup with two wings mm -hmm. and a platform where the cup is kept mm -hmm. and uh, the background is dark but the cup is shining mm -hmm. yeah yeah and there are two separate small wings nearby mm -hmm. beautiful as if they are supporting they are supporting to the cup mm -hmm. and uh, they are taking the color of the cup that is the golden color mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Wings are, I think, I feel that the wings are spreading and the cup will fly. Wow, beautiful. But that may not be the description. The description is the first part. You actually went further. Absolutely right. My second question would be, what yeah. do you feel or what does the card feel? And you answered that question by saying that you feel like 
the cup is going to start flying. So you, that's a great thing. You answered my question. What does the card feel? When we say the card, it doesn't just mean the card itself. It could also mean the character in the card. So thank you for answering that. Now, can I ask you, what do you feel when you look at this card? I felt hope mm -hmm. and very positive sensation, very positive image for me, mm -hmm. as if something good is going to happen. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Now, I'm going to ask you the three questions that I gave you guys are general questions. You can ask for any card. I'm going to ask you a specific question now. Where in the card, where in the picture is your goal? Because you guys remember we took the card as a picture for the goal. So I'm asking, where in the picture is your goal? Uh, as in on the card or on the paper? In the picture. In the picture. My goal is the cup. The goal is the cup. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. The, cup. Yeah. the goal is the cup. So thank you, Dr. Manorama. Beautiful. Thank you for giving us a wonderful example. So you guys do the same thing. Use the same questions and answer your own answers based on the same picture, but oh, keeping in mind your personal goal. Okay, thank you, Dr. Manorama. That was a beautiful example that you just gave us. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, Yelena is writing here. Uh, I see a glass that can be half full. And I also see angel wings with the gold. Thank you, Yelena, for sharing that with us because that's a completely different point of view. And it's so beautiful to see that. So the first thing, let's say if you're doing this in group, the first thing would be to pay attention to the person, you know, the main person talking, let's say in this case, Dr. Manorama. The second thing would be you go around the group and you ask each person to share their point of view, their thought, and... Lana, is it possible briefly to repeat what Dr. Manorama tell? Yes, I'm gonna repeat now, absolutely. Because I did not hear her very well. Oh, I see. Okay, so actually was noting. The first question I asked was, what do you see? We described the picture. And Dr. Manorama described that she sees a golden cup with wings, a dark background. And she said, the wings are turning gold from the cup. I hope mm -hmm. I got it right, okay? Mm -hmm. um, then I asked her, what does the card feel? Um, I didn't jot down her answer. I, oh, she answered herself actually. She said that she felt that the cup will be flying. The cup mm -hmm. will get up and fly. Um, Dr. Manorama, if I'm not saying it right, you're welcome to yes. interrupt me. No. I think I said it right. Absolutely. Did I get it right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. And the third question I asked, what do you feel when you look at the cup? Mm -hmm. And she said that she feels hope and she has positive associations. Mm -hmm. And then I ask a specific question. Where in the picture is your goal? And when I ask that, um, it can be different elements. It can be different aspects of the picture. And it's a person's choice to choose which symbol in the picture represents their goal. OK? so. Um, Dr. Manorama said that the golden cup mm -hmm. is her goal, right? As far as I remember, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and then I said that, you know, Yuliana over here has a different point of view. And, um, oh, thank you, Dr. Manorama. Anybody else wants to wade in? Did anybody else wants to share their point of view or what they see in the picture? Um. What I saw, uh, my first uh, reaction to the picture was like, you know, uh, light surprise. I feel like sensation in my eyes and my forehead. Mm -hmm. And um, when I saw cup right away, 
uh, I got the idea about cup, it's uh, which is getting um, energy. Mm, uh, like, uh, and when the cup is full with the energy, it's uh, ready to fly, uh -huh. about to fly. And cup is uh, placed on a, it looks like a brick, but, uh, uh -huh. but it's like a layer between uh, abyss and uh, some reality. And cup now like an imbalanced state when it's full, but it's almost ready to fly because it's, um, uh, you know, it's fulfilled already. It's ready to go through, uh, uh, through all conditioning, which keep us uh, mm -hmm. in this reality um, in very dark place, I mean. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Guys, um, I don't know about you. I personally, whatever Masha said, I did not even see that. So whatever she says, and that's what you do when you guys share in the group, when you hear somebody else's reflection, the way to look at it is to hear and see what applies to you. And then you can write it down. I like the, the state being, you know, between the reality and, you know, you said the abyss, I think, right? The above maybe. Mm -hmm. And that kind of makes sense to me. That reflected well in me. And I'm noted, noting that in my mind, you can write it down. And the same with you. When you hear other people's reflection, you listen and you're like, uh-huh. And some of it might resonate with you and you can write it down or note it somewhere. And now the important part, some of it may not resonate with you. Some of, some of it would be like completely opposite. And you can also write it down, two ways to react to that, either just ignore it, or if you are, you know, want to actually feel and understand why do you feel that way, basically you can either have a positive reaction to whatever somebody says or to a symbol in the card or a negative reaction. And there is place and space for each one to be um, kind of uh, understood, right? You can choose again, like I said, to ignore the negative, or you can choose to figure it out maybe and think, why does it bother me? And then that's something when it comes to negative, you kind of have to be careful because a lot of times that will invoke some traumatic experience. So you kind of have to be careful. It may invoke a stressful experience. So I personally would advise to do it with a psychologist or a coach that you know. Um, but again, if you're a coach yourself and you know what you're doing, you're welcome to do that. My advice, of course, has to be um, uh, on a professional level that if it's a negative reaction, kind of deal with it carefully because it can open up a can of worms, so to say. Um, and we have to be careful about that, okay? Now, let's go on. I'm going to put this picture. I'm not putting it away. I'm just going to put it here. But I want us to go on. Now, remember, actually, maybe I'll put it here, right? I have a goal. And now, this is where I am. And this is where my goal is. And I have, you know, kind of, I have my own kind of pathway, right? I have a pathway to get there. Now, I'm looking at my goal, by the way. My goal looks nice and big. But I'm not sure, honestly, at this point, I'm looking and I'm not sure, how do I get there? Even if I take my finger and try to go with my finger like this, I don't feel comfortable. It's very important. I pay attention to my body. Remember that sensation in my chest? I was so excited. It feels very uncomfortable. So I'm paying attention to that. That means I'm not ready to go here yet. So what can I do? What is the favorite thing we do in coaching? find resources, okay? We're going to find resources and we're gonna mark them on the paper. They can be anywhere in your paper, right? Anywhere around um, yourself or your goal, honestly, anywhere. Um, what we're going to do is find resources. And I would like for you guys to, um, let's use a different type of um, finding the cards. I'm gonna share my screen. 
and pay attention. I'm going to open up. What I'm going to do is I will share this deck of cards. Oops. Yeah, I will share this deck of cards with you, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if we have any gentlemen, just in case. Um, and actually, I'm going to show just um, show you once before I share with you. Um, who would like to be a volunteer and choose a picture for everybody to see? Anybody here? Should I do it myself? Anybody wants to choose a picture? We are in the field, which means we're really here all together. So one way or another, we're all relevant to each other. And even though we don't know each other's goals, we, by choosing a picture, we will still find the picture. And I want to let you know, guys, any Just picture can be scroll, used. For scroll it. to see it better. Yes, I'm scrolling it down. Marsha, you want to be the one choosing? Uh, I'm just trying to see all of them. Yep, I'm showing you all of them. Any picture here that catches? This how one, do you, so how yes, do you choose? The, the uh, picture of a girl who plays in golden heart on the tree of life. Mm -hmm. So how do you choose a picture, not blindly in an open style fashion? Look through the different, you know, you can take a deck, you can take 10 pictures, you can take 20 pictures, you can take three pictures, you can take five pictures. Look through the pictures and the picture that will call your name, the picture that you will like, look at it and you're like, oh, I want to continue looking at it. The picture that will be calling you that will kind of like bring yourself, keep telling you, pick me, pick me will make most sense to you. That's the picture you should pick, okay? Mm -hmm. Because whether we understand it or not, but subconsciously there is something within that picture that's bringing your attention. That's kind of telling you, please look at me. Everybody look at this wonderful, beautiful picture. Now, Masha, since you're the one who chose it, would you mm -hmm. like, to describe now, what do we do with this? How do we relate it to our resource? Just so you guys understand. We look at the picture and mm -hmm. the first thing you do is like we did before. The first picture question you ask is, please describe the picture. Um, so okay. Masha, what do you see? Okay, what I see, I see gold. Mm -hmm. I think um, uh, golden uh, hearts, which represent like lo love on the tree of life. But I also see like tree of life over here. It's made out of metal. It's like in our uh, reality now, unfortunately, we forget what life is. We forget flow of life. It's become very rigid. It's become very... Uh, like, uh, mm, yeah, it's a correct word. It become rigid. It's become mm -hmm. it's no flow in life. Uh, in life, it's uh, become very uh, like separated. And what mm -hmm. she is doing, she is trying to revive the tree of life by placing her love all over and mm -hmm. in her life with. Um, with, uh, with, with the world to make this world gain a life and uh, flow with the energy, energy of God, energy of love. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That was a beautiful, beautiful description. Now, if you are, um, when you do this with yourself, it's going to be a little harder, but let's say you're doing it with somebody and you notice that somebody is not noticing a certain element. You can either A, choose to tell that person about the element that the person didn't see, but you will think it might be relevant to them or B, not to do that. Just let them see what they see. Um, again, if you choose to decide to tell that person, the way you do it is an open-ended question. You say, um, Marsha, what do you see on the bottom? Can you tell me, please? 
I see on the bottom she has a lot of in her potential. She has a lot of, mm. but also I see she is climbing a ladder. Mm -hmm. They represent her effort uh, to get to the point when she is able to play this heart on the tree of life. Beautiful, beautiful. You guys notice that? So I'm going to go on. I can ask about other ones, but I want to go on and ask Masha, what does the card or how does the card feel? Again, when I say the word card, it can be the general picture or the character. Yeah card it's up to the person saying it to decide which aspect they choose mm -hmm. even a hard uh, background is very dark now but mm. it's um, it is a optimistic connotation like uh, i feel uh, enthusiasm and um, optimism and about this card mm -hmm. beautiful thank you how do you, well, you actually did share how you feel because that would be my next question, right? How do you feel? And you also did mention that you feel optimistic, enthusiastic, right? As mm -hmm. you guys notice, sometimes the way the card feels and the person feels could be the same and sometimes they're different, okay? And the fourth question, I'm gonna ask you a relevant question. What is the resource, you know, going according to your goal? What is the resource that you see in this picture? Of course, it's love, and first of all, of self-love. Mm -hmm. When you open yourself to self-love, you open yourself to universal love. Mm -hmm. Okay. So looking at your drawing, okay, where do you think that resource of love would go? Again, um, since we're not doing like um, a coaching session here, you know, um, it would be a little too personal if I would ask Masha what her goal is and how is this resource relevant. But for yourself, please note, Mark, ask yourself a question. How is that resource relevant to my goal? And then the answer will actually come even in the drawing. Where in the picture would you like to put that resource, okay? Choose to find the place intuitively and you can put it as a symbol. Uh, usually it's a circle. It can be, a, if you guys understand the meaning of all the shapes, the square and the triangle, you're welcome to utilize them. If you're not really ready yet, you can just do a circle. I would say that's the safest thing to do. Um, I actually, the love, I'll be honest with you, is actually a circle symbol to me. I'm putting it here. I've been eyeing this place for quite some time. Ever since I spoke about resources, this place kept been telling me, 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 please put me something here. So I am putting that resource. Thank you, Masha, for sharing yeah. beautifully with us your okay. point of view. Lana, may I ask you a question? Uh, it's yes. okay to put my resource. I feel like I would like to place circle around my present circle. It's okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. guys, a resource will be relevant toward your, it might be relevant for your future goal, but it might be very relevant through your present. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to take a circle. We're going to draw a line from the circle through the present. So the resource would work in the present. And then we'll go to the future, go through the goal and go to the end of the paper. Okay. That's how we're going to connect the resource, okay? You do like two or three lines like that, okay? You can actually even go outside, right? Mirror line through the present to the future goal and go outside. One more line I'm going to do because I really want to connect it nicely, you know? As you do the neural line, breathe in and out and connect it. I actually did want to, yeah, I saw some people shared, everybody... I, um, when we finish, right, I would usually ask, Masha, are you finished? And we already know that she did, but, you know, I'm going to say just in case we say, are you finished? And then we say, is it okay if I, or is it okay if somebody else will share their reflection of the picture? Very important to be aware of that because that person may be very sensitive toward their association with the picture. So if it's that person picture, let's say in this case, the picture is for everybody, right? But usually when I do it, 
right? In a group, in my group, I work with uh, people I know. Uh, each person gets their own picture and it's their choice to say, yes, I would like to hear other people's opinions or say, no, I really would like to keep it to myself and have my own associations the way they are. And it's important to respect that state. And, you know, then you go on and deal with another person. Um, the picture here is for everybody, but I will ask nonetheless, Masha, is it okay if somebody else would share their opinion of the picture? Of course. Excellent. So I see Micheline here has shared love, give light in the dark. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for that. Self-love also, yes, yes, beautiful. Anybody else would like to share either by talking or writing, you're welcome to. You're welcome to. I'm going to start the rounding process by going through the line that we already put here and round out all of the intersection so that this wonderful resource that Marsha brought out um, will be utilized, but again, now notice, I chose to accept Masha's interpretation of this resource, and I'm choosing to use that same um, interpretation association, because it kind of did speak to me. You are welcome to use it, or say, you know, I felt this and that, and you're welcome to do that. Okay. Oh, okay, so I'm going to read what everybody wrote. Christina wrote, loving everything you do. Beautiful, beautiful, right? Because we're writing, but honestly, if I would be, uh, if you guys would be talking, I would ask specifically, which part in the picture, and I would ask you to even find the symbol, which part in the picture represents loving everything you do? Which part represents the fruit of the, for the future? Beautiful, the fruit for the future, wow, absolutely. Generosity, Frauke, you wrote generosity. And I would tell you guys, pay attention to your own answers and look at the picture. Pay attention which symbol in the picture is generosity to you, right? Like Marsha mentioned, how she mentioned all of the details I would ask you to pay the same thing. Now I'm gonna throw something else in here. Look at the way the girl is dressed, okay? Okay, Frauke also writes opportunity, but you have to climb and go for it. Beautiful. It's a golden heart. Yes, generosity is a golden heart. I'm throwing in the clothes, guys, not saying anything further yet. I'm going to round out the intersections for another minute, but I want you to look at the way the girl is dressed and either say, all right, what attracted you or what um, specifically within that dressing um, attracted your attention? Okay. You're welcome to share in the chat. Um, I have my I have something in there that I saw, um, but I want you guys to you know to have an opportunity to you know see maybe you see it yourself maybe you will give a different interpretation to it, but there is something in there that really caught my attention, and I'll be honest with you I'm a little like now that I'm rounding it out. And of course, as I round out, I always automatically do the awareness process, which is I pay attention to how my body feels, what my emotions are, and of course, what my thoughts are. And my body, as I'm thinking about that element I saw on her dress, on her clothes, I'm sorry, is really, it's giving me a sensation within my throat I feel like I want to laugh, giggle, you know, not even laugh, but like giggle, like a little girl. It's like, it gave me this childhood kind of association. So I'm actually telling you about the feeling already I have from it without actually even describing what I saw. Okay, I'm going to round out. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, basket with hearts is generosity. Yes, Dr. Manaram. Sabine is saying the pocket in her skirt and the color red. Yes, that pocket. That pocket gave me this little tingling feeling. I remembered myself as a child. I don't know, did you guys have this? As a child, if you got a new clothes and it would have a pocket, that would be the, like the cherry on top of the ice cream, you know? It's good enough for you to get new clothes. But if it would have a pocket, you would feel so special about it. You're like, oh, you know, it has a pocket. It has my own, like, you know, your own, you know how kids are like, especially in the, our, my generation, right? I'm in the 40s, not telling you exactly, but uh, in the 40s, in my generation, right? We didn't have much independence, right? We had to do things the way adults tell us to do, right? That was the adult's world. And having a pocket was like having your own, little like you know like um freedom to do whatever you want to you can put whatever you want to in that pocket you can hide things to me a pocket in general a pocket is a symbol of like something mysterious you know of something you know of something you know it's a, like something some secret of yours it's your little world it's your little own place where you can put whatever you want whatever you find to be important to you right so that was so i looked at that pocket and to me it got so excited i remembered myself as a child when i was so excited every time i got a clothes with pockets and actually my kids had the same thing i just remembered i don't remember which one of my kids but every time they had a pocket i think all of them they would be like so excited they're like look a pocket I got. I remember thinking at one point, they should make all of the clothes for kids with pockets. Because, you know, it's so exciting when kids like, and my kids would hide little tiny toys in there, you know? And what, and now I'm going to give you that question. What does that pocket represent to you? I told you what it represented to me. What about you? You're welcome to write. Well, you're welcome to think and write it down for yourself first. And then if you wish to, you're welcome to share with us your thought and your reflection. Because as I said, we're all in the same field. We're all in the same energy space. So whatever you say will be quite relevant to me and, you know, and, we're, and to everybody else in the field. And then people actually do choose whether they want to find it relevant or not. Um, can I throw one more thing before resources? Beautiful. Yes, Frauke. One more thing I'm going to throw you away and then we're going to move on. Um, I will, I'm um, thinking, um, <clears throat> I want to share this card with you. How should I go about doing so? Should I share now in the chat or should I put it in the event? What do you guys think? I'm thinking if I put it in the chat now, you know, after we finish the meeting, the chat kind of disappears. So that's something to um, keep in mind. But I want to throw one more thing, paying attention to her clothes. Do you guys notice the layers, right? She has a shorter dress and she has a longer underneath something. And then she has pants, right? What do you guys think about that? Again, honestly, I can look at this picture and I can find more and more symbols and meanings. But guess what? I have finished my rounding out and I want to go further. <clears throat> the time is 11.10. So I think we have time for maybe one or two more resources, okay? I'm gonna stop the sharing now. Actually, I'm not gonna stop the sharing. Can everybody see what I made? I just wanna show you. I finished, I added my resource. And by the way, I look at this resource now and I realize I want to make it bigger. So I'm gonna make it a bit bigger because as I look, the more I looked at the picture, the more meaning it gave me. So I realized these resources, the resources are expanding. And I want to kind of expand my, my understanding of the resource has expanded. So the result, I want to expand the 
picture, okay? Um, any questions so far before I go on regarding the resources or the max, you know, the metaphoric associative card or the neurographic as we're drawing it now? Anybody have any questions? Everybody's good. Everybody understand what I'm saying? I'm going to go on because I am looking forward. I actually want to mark here. By the way, this is what you can do also. You can turn it over. I'm going to write it here to go. You can turn it over and write the resource, right? I'm going to take the resource that Masha gave because I find it to be resonating with me. But you can write down whatever you find to be that resource, whatever words you are taking. How did you... Um, name that resource, okay? You can write it on the back of your picture. I actually feel like I wanna write it inside my resource because it's. I find it to be such an invigorating resource, such a powerful one. Okay, everybody ready to go on to for the second resource? Okay, I still have my picture here. My goal is still here, right? I'm gonna go, who wants to volunteer and choose the second picture for the second resource? Anybody here wants to choose? It will be your choice whether you want to interpret it or not, by the way. Fraki, you wanna go? Excellent. I'm gonna start the, um, actually, how about this? Would this be more comfortable if I put the picture and then go forward? Okay, you let me know where yeah. to stop, okay? I don't see anything for the moment. I see your picture. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm doing this and I realized I didn't share. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're starting, okay? Would you prefer to have big pictures or do you wanna see small pictures? Uh, like this, like this the, the seeing them all I think would be great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me know. I'm gonna scroll down slowly. You let me know if you find a picture that you would like to make bigger and start looking at. Yep. Um, the the many flowers. I can't see my. The this thing. one. Yes, this one. This one. Yes, this one. This Excellent. Time. Now, would you like to talk about this picture or would you like to keep it to yourself? It's your choice. I can talk about it. Um, Excellent. So, so tell me first, what do you see in the picture? Can you describe it, please? Yes. Uh, so I see this girl uh, picking flowers from mm -hmm. such an abundance of flowers that are there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and at the same time, it looks like she's dancing around picking them up. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, we have a dark background with the with the lantern up there, but the flowers are all fully blooming. So <laughs> to me. What I thought when I saw it was immediately uh, I was thinking of the growth, growth of um, growth of new things that come from our subconscious. Mm -hmm. And I love the, the abundance and the, 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 the diversity of it. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's it, the abundance and diversity. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel happy, you know, it makes me feel yeah, yeah like dancing myself, like yay. <laughs> dancing, I love the dancing part, yeah. Can I tell, can I ask you, what does the card feel? She's very... Or how does the card feel also, could be, you know, how? She feels very... Uh, attentive and concentrated mm -hmm. to pick one flower at a time mm -hmm. to really focus on each one separately 
Focus. Mm -hmm. Focus on each. Wow, beautiful. So How not you to get distracted, you know, not to get overwhelmed, mm -hmm. but like one flower at a time. Beautiful. Now, Franke, I want to ask you, how do you feel when you look at that card? As I said, happy and like dancing. Happy and dancing. Beautiful. Now, I'm going to ask you a specific question. Again, I don't know your goal, but I think you mentioned something about the project or, you know, growing, you mentioned when you described. Mm -hmm. In relevance to your goal, what resource do you see in this card? that you would like to put in your picture or note it down for yourself? It's trust. Trust, wow. What a wonderful, wow. Very interesting resource, trust. Okay, Franky came up with trust. Can I ask you, what does trust mean to you? Pay attention to the question, everybody. You can further, you know, kind of go further a little bit because trust is a general word. What is yeah. it to you? It's specifically related to my goal, it is trust uh, that there will be always enough. Ah. Enough resources, enough knowledge, enough whatever. So but then trust, I can ask you. The trust in the capabilities. Who is enough capability? Beautiful. Can I ask you another question? Who is this trust toward to? Who do you want, you know, capability of whom or what? It's I your trust. It's like self-trust. It's self-trust. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was asking. Excellent. Interesting. Beautiful. Okay. Now everybody else. You can have your own take from this picture. Now, Frauke, are you finished? Yes. You're sharing. Thank you for sharing. It was a beautiful sharing. And I personally find it to be quite resonated with me. Like I enjoyed the dancing part really reflected with me because that's also something I enjoy to do. Now, is it okay if somebody else would share their feelings or reflections? Sure. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity. So I'm going to read what people wrote. Carpe Diem wrote Micheline. Well, Micheline, I want to hear more about it. I honestly feel like, what do you mean by Carpe Diem? Like, which part of the picture? I got the general Carpe Diem, but that's a beautiful one, by the way. It's a beautiful name for a resource. I want to pay attention to that. Excellent. Beautiful. Now, Elena is saying it's a happy, uh, Elena, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right. Some people say Elena, some people say Elena. So I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Um, ah, Micheline is saying one day by the time. Yeah, one day at a time. Beautiful. I love it, right? That's resonated with what Frauke said, how she collects the flower one by one. Okay. Now, Elena is saying it's a happy card and very colorful. You don't, ooh, I like this part. You don't have to ask. You can just pick it. Beautiful, right? Abundance, generosity. We're still in that. Beautiful. Excellent. I like, I'm going to put on my picture the resource. And the first resource that came to my mind was dancing. But I like the whole generosity and you can pick anything you want to, you know. Each flower is so unique for me. It is accepting my uniqueness. Thank you, Angelica. Beautiful, absolutely. Yes, each, like I say, it's any or, or every single picture, every single flower here, by the way, can be looked at in details for quite some time. Yes, you can honestly, you can choose this, just this one picture and each flower would be a resource and put it in your picture, you know, in your drawing, just something to keep in mind. But yes, I'm going to put a resource right here. It's a nice big resource. And like I said, I am contemplating if it should be generosity or dancing. I kind of want to do it like dancing because I enjoy dancing. And I want this project to kind of be like a dancing, like be an enjoyable thing, you know. So I'm going to draw the line. 
through my resource, go back to my present, right? To where I am now, because I want to bring the resource to my present state. And then with the help of that resource, I will go toward my goal, okay? Same thing like we did with the previous resource, okay? Two to three lines, you know, you can go, by the way, the lines really can go all over the paper. You don't have to go straight down like I did. I went a little up. Now look at this and you can pay attention to that. I touched upon love, dancing and love. I love dancing. There you go. My subconscious, my intuition kind of connected those two together. You can pay attention to that, you know. Look at this again. I felt like connecting them both. I went up to my first resource, then down to my present, and only then I went to my goal, okay? Now, what we did before. Um, when I'm gonna go on and do the rounding process, um, Frauke actually mentioned it. She mentioned the ladder. She said, it's dark outside, but there is a ladder. Um, what do you guys think? What does it mean to you? What is that symbol of that ladder? It's a specific ladder. What do you think of it? What is your association emotionally wise? How do you feel this ladder is relevant to you? into your project. Think about it. You can share with me if you want. You can just jot it down for yourself. I'm going to do the rounding a bit. And then I will read your answers. But um, I want to tell you that so far, I'm truly enjoying the whole process of sharing just beautiful resources and pictures and just the sharing process with all of you. How is it going with you guys? Are you enjoying the class, the session so far? Uh, and you guys already have the answers here. I'm gonna start reading them now, huh? Uh, Okay, so Sabine is writing, let my light shine, so lightful. Aha, so you find the lantern to be lightful, excellent. Frauke, you're saying it's teaching, bringing in light where there is still darkness, beautiful, I love it. Dr. Manorama, it's support, it's reliable, reliability, absolutely. Yeah, and Sheila, you're answering the question that you're enjoying the session, yes. Elena, you're saying, Helper for the goal, yes, it's our assistant, excellent. Light to see where I have to go. Hmm, very interesting, you're right. You guys notice where the lantern is, is positioned. It's positioned on the right side, not on the left. And as we remembered what I guys even told you when we do it in the picture, that we the past is always in the left and we always go to the right. That's something to keep in mind, symbolism, right? Wow, beautiful. Thank you, everybody. Beautiful sharing. I enjoy it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. As I'm doing rounding, breathing in and out, I am paying attention to my body. And I'll tell you, the dancing part is giving the sensation to my feet. My feet are doing the tarantella, okay? My feet are into dancing. I think I'm gonna go turn on some music and do some dancing after the session because my body is like you haven't done that already for quite some time, right? Do the boogie woogie. And as I continue the rounding, if it's okay with you, I'm gonna throw a few more things your way, but this one is gonna be familiar already. Pay attention to her dress. Maybe pay attention to the color of her dress, right? What does that color mean to you? How is it relevant to you? Um, and also pay attention what she's standing on. Okay, you can, like I said, even note it for yourself. 
You're welcome to share with us, right? Because it's very interesting and quite relevant to the picture and see if it's relevant to you, your goal making. The time is 1026. I want to be mindful of time because I know it's Sunday morning. And you guys probably have things to do. I was about to say, you want to spend time with your family. And then I realized, you know, you guys probably have been spending a lot of time with your family. Some of you may be in lockdown or maybe not. But, you know, that, you know, I, I saw this skit where they made a skit and say, you know, the angel comes and the person is like, so, you know, the 2020 was quite a year. And the angel is like, yeah, I fulfilled all of your dreams. You got to spend more time with your family. You got to work less. And, you know, the money, the government is giving you some money where you don't have to work. So it was like a little, you know, funny. But when you think about it, it's like, yeah, we did want to spend more time with our family and less time working. But we didn't think it would come this way, right? Anyway, what do you guys Lana, think? Lana, I yeah. have a question about if anybody have thoughts about um, mm -hmm. this um, light hanging fanari. Um, uh, yeah, uh, fanari is uh, fl not flashlight. Um, it's uh, <laughs> projector light at night. It's um, no, it's not um, projector light. No, no, no. It's um, street light. Street light, yes, but some kind of chandelier out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's beautiful, yeah, right? You're right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, is, it is. It actually is a street light because I, it, when you look at it, it has a post that it's hanging. Um, yes, uh, happy birthday to your brother, Christina. I'm going to finish up uh, because I know I, th I think I said that it's going to be until 11:30, and I know people have places to go, so. Um, guys, please finish your picture. We're done. You can add one more resource. I'm going to share the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to share my Google link in the event itself. So you're welcome to use the card and you can add another resource and you can use the cards and you're welcome to finish your picture and post it in our group, the world of Neurographica. I personally would love to see, okay? Thank you, Christina, for joining us. Um, now, uh-huh. Uh, okay, so Sheila, can I ask you a question loudly? Yes, you color your drawing. Yes, you absolutely color. I'm still finishing my, my um, rounding process, but absolutely the... Color is what gives emotions and feelings to our drawing. So, absolutely right. Do add um, colors when you finish the rounding. If you finish adding resources, you can start adding color. Um, Sheila, I think you said yes, right? I can ask you your question loudly. Yeah. Yes. Um, do, you, do you pull interpretation from one card at a time or both cards at the same time? So, I would say do one card at a time simply because it can be a bit confusing for your mind and your subconscious to focus on two pictures at the same time. It would be maybe even counterproductive in a way. So I would definitely suggest one picture at a time. What you can do, uh, what are the name from the first deck? Oh, Dixit. I put it in the chat. It's above in the chat. It's D. I X I T, Dixit. It's a game. Um, so what I would do, like what you can do, you can do the opposite. You can use one card for all of your resources, even your goal. I can do like as a person who knows how to do that. Like I can honestly use one card. I can use any picture, honestly, any picture. It doesn't have to be a whimsical picture like this one or a multifaceted picture like the Dixit cards were. Any picture you see, if you have the right set of questions, you can use it to, I remember going once um, when it was already like pandemic time, we used to gather at my friend's house and, you know, um, and I forgot my deck of cards. 
and she had beautiful paintings on the wall. And we used the paintings on the wall and she had paintings of like the nature, you know, like uh, the boat in the water and people like, like different countries like Venice and places like that. And we used those pictures to bring the metaphoric association within each person. Any pictures can be used multiple times. Any pictures can be used for different uh, resources, different aspects. But let's say, if you say, what is my resource or what is my goal? And then you can choose different pictures, but to use two pictures at the same time would be a kind of a red flag to me because it's kind of counterproductive because you should really focus on one picture and allow your mind to give you the answers, to seek the answers. Like I said, any symbols within the picture will give you an array of answers, like an, a light within your subconscious to see what you are seeking, whether it's a resource, whether it's a goal. You know, sometimes even the goal, I could have spent more time on the goal and talk more about the goal and figure out the aspects of the goal that let's say you didn't even realize when you thought about that goal, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So those are the different things that we're paying attention to. I'm going to start finishing up. I'm going to call on one resource just to give you guys, you know, uh, uh, to start bringing you toward that part in the drawing. Now, those of you who are uh, have your basics and who are familiar with the rules of Neurographica, you know, the seven steps, remember to add the color, the field lines, and um, to add the, if you want to bring out certain shapes to do that during the graphical affixing, okay? And at the end, you can write, you know, after you finish your completely picture, your color, your field lines, everything, remember to just jot down what was your reflection after you finish the drawing, this neurographic drawing. Look at your goal and start reflecting. What is your goal? now the map yes marie cordua thank you angelica thank you i actually use the colette baron read other cards i have two of her decks uh, i think i saw the map i was thinking about it i have her other two decks the animals are magnificent and i have the um, the, I was using it yesterday. And I have the, this one, the Sacred Journey, Sacred Traveler. Also my favorite, the Sacred Traveler. Those in America, by the way, the cards that I, that I shared with you, the whimsical ones on the digital ones, I don't have them in real life because they are, like I said, even though they're drawn by a French artist, they're mostly available, I think in Europe or something. I was able to get it electro buy it electronically from this website in Russian, you know, Russia and Ukraine and Israel, by the way, um, are most manufacturers of the metaphoric cards. I think they come up with one metaphoric card per day. That's the amount. People have like thousand metaphoric cards now if you go to the metaphoric cards market. Okay. The American people in America. Um, you can find this on Amazon. I don't wanna, um, I'm not gonna show you the cards now because I think it's like, it might confuse you a bit at this point, but the sacred, uh, uh, oh, this is actually by Denise Lean, but I have the, uh, the color Baron Reed, I know who you're talking about. She's, she has a, a lot of cards, like Oracle kind of cards, and I have the animal cards, it's wonderful. Let me ask you if you are interested in me making another session about it, let me know. I can use different cards just to get you. Um, the animal cards are absolutely magnificent. We can use that for next time. You're welcome to write um, in the event or in the group, the World of Neurographica. Kind of let me know um, what your opinion, like kind of review, let me know you enjoyed the session. If there's any aspect of this session you would like to focus more, um, 
I personally enjoy combining neurographica with different techniques because I find it to be so powerful. You know, two powerful techniques combined will make it boom, you know, really powerful. Yes, yes. So we can definitely do that. That's something I would be planning. Um, in the world of neurographica, I posted a poll. So you're welcome to participate in the poll. I think currently we're... Um, people are voting for Monday afternoon and Sunday morning sessions and proposing sessions every week where we can draw neurographical on different topics, you know, different algorithms or even combine neurographical with different um, techniques. By the way, the timeline that we did today, the timeline is a part of the neuro timeline uh, course that we are starting this week. If you are interested, you're welcome to join us. We're starting this Tuesday. It's a certified course from the Institute of Psychology um, for Psychology of Creativity, the Pavel Piskaryov Institute. And if you're planning later on to become an instructor, this will come in handy because uh, the certified course, um, the money, the fee you paid for the course will be counted toward your instructor's uh, course, or you can just take this course for your own. Um, Lana, do we start this course already? No, we're starting on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I will send you the link, Masha. I will send you the link. Mm -hmm. We're starting this coming Tuesday. It's an amazing course. It will tell, I mentioned just a little bit today about timeline, but that one talks more about actual planning, actual, you know, how do you plan? How do you use how do you even put, like I did very simple today, but how do you put your goal on a timeline in a way that it will actually start realizing, you know, where do you put your resources in the right place that it will start working in the right direction? Uh, Sheila, I'm so, you're so welcome. Thank you. I'm very glad, by the way. I personally love the metaphoric cards. When I was introduced to them, like I said, at first I was like apprehensive. I'm like, I'm not doing any fortune telling here, you know. I was working with a coach who did it with me and I was like a little apprehensive. I'm like, mm, I don't know if I wanna do this. And then, uh, you know, as I started asking questions and she started explaining, and then I started looking toward it and I started learning, it blew my mind. I, you know, I started using them almost every day. Um, I started using them in every session I had with my group. And I wanna tell you people, when they start using it, they love it. It's very powerful. It's very amazing. I have a game, Kesef. Um, some of you are part of it that I use it in. And it's like the, you know, the important, the most important, like kind of um, part of the game because it brings out so many subconscious blocks and inhibition. Kesef is a game of money. It's a, a, you know, it's about financial stability. And it brings out the necessary part, you know, it brings out all of those blocks and inhibitions you have inside of you that you can use, you know, to clear out. And that's what we do in the game. And then we, you know, we start growing. We start going toward the goal of financial, you know, increasing finance, understanding of how money works, how finance works and what it means to us and what it means to the world around us. So, um, uh, basically, yeah, any actually all of my non, uh, like I have a trauma, uh, session. It's actually, uh, more like half of a course. It's a four hour, uh, session, like a mini course that I did. I utilize the metaphoric cards there too. Basically, honestly, all of my non-certified sessions and courses that I do within Neurographica, you know, I utilize the metaphoric cards, even in the Neuro Mandela course that I taught. Um, we utilize uh, um, metaphoric cards to kind of bring out the better, the more, um, um, the more powerful kind of aspect of our subconscious, especially when you do the, the um, neuro mandala or family system, you know, um, stuff like that. I started to color my picture. I'm going to add later on. I actually enjoy doing my coloring like in a very meditative kind of state where I think and I pay attention to my color. But uh, to let you guys know also, pay attention to the color and think what it means to me. 
Thank you everybody for joining me. I truly tremendously enjoyed your company. I felt it was like, I still feel it's such a great energy vibe we're having here as we were sharing our personal reflections with others. I thank you for being so brave to do that. You know, it was very special and I do appreciate you guys sharing a bit of yourself with all of us. So that's something um, I wanted to guys let you know. And um, if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask me. Um, please put your pictures in the world of Neurographica group. Um, yeah. Lana, I just would like to uh, add comments. Um, mm -hmm. Very much appreciate uh, the way, simplicity way, how you can, uh, uh, you know, convey the most comp uh, complicated uh, concept in very simple way and uh, but it's have so many multi layers and so many dimensions and uh, it's um, for every person what person you know able to pick everybody can find something extremely useful thank you so much Masha. i appreciate it coming from you personally and on a general level as well i appreciate it I personally enjoy the metaphoric cards and I think that's why I feel this energy coming out of me to share it with you. I'm so glad, Sabina, that you came and you joined this class. Yes, it's you guys discovering. I wanna tell you what I gave you today is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, no. but, um, I'm gonna share, more. I think I'm gonna schedule because I enjoy it so much. I'm gonna schedule a few more sessions. We can explore different aspects, different cards and delve dip deeper. What can we do? How do we bring it out? So thank you everybody for your very kind words, for joining us, for sharing with us and for just being a part of our beautiful energy circle. Wishing you a wonderful, beautiful weekend, continuation of your weekend ahead. And of course, you know, it's still, uh, even if it's the 17th, I say happy new year, the whole year, right? Happy new year, everybody. Yeah. Enjoy your weekend and the beginning of your week. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. All the best to you guys. Bye-bye.